Hi, and welcome to Wrong Way. And it's the middle of winter, 12th December in Warsaw, Poland. And today I'm going to give you a 2021 review or late 2021 review of the Emotion V11. So let me tell you more about it. Whee! Wrong Way. Apparently Huskies like UCs a lot. It's good to have a wheel that is really waterproof and has a waterproof rating. Anyways, uh, today I'm going to tell you a bit more about the V11 revisited because I've already had it before. But since that time, I have gained more knowledge, more experience. I have more stuff on the wheel, which I'm also going to tell you about. Just as a reminder, this is actually my wheel. I traded it for a Bigo Motion Pro with some money on top of that for me. And if you want a wheel like that, you can feel free to check out any coupon codes or partners I'm working with in the description below. So in this video, I'll be a bit more energetic, a bit more compressed information, not like the, I don't know, couch reviews we've been doing recently, but still packed full of information. Let's get this started. No, that's what Monocat said. All right, so first I wanted to talk about something that I didn't uh, appreciate that much in the past, and this is safety. Um, this wheel has a safe battery pack, and Inmotion actually has several criteria for their batteries to be safe, such as over voltage, temperature information. You can check even in your app if the battery packs are balanced. And although I won't bore you to death with every single bit of this safety information, all I can say is, none of these wheels burn down and they're safe to charge they have a safe charging experience and they are also water resistant so in this weather that you see here it's pretty much safe to ride them and with the recent newest batches of these wheels the bearings also do not fail which was the case in the earlier batches there are also safe limits on the wheel in terms of top speed um, overpowering the wheel, overheating, etc, etc. So if you want to sort of buy a wheel that is safe and you don't want to worry about DIYing every, anything in the future, you don't want to be afraid to charge anything at home or take it with you uh, on trips, then well, Inmotion and Kingsong are sort of the wheels to go. With that said, let's talk about convenience. This wheel is really convenient and it has pretty much all of the features that you would need in a wheel, maybe except for speakers. The main upsides include a lift switch with a, uh, a handle that is placed here. It both works when the trolley handle is up and when the trolley handle is down. The trolley handle itself is in a good spot and works well for just walking around with the wheel and you have tons of grip because this thing is angled, shaped towards your hand. And the height is, well, it could be higher, but it's still very doable. Charge ports are located in a nice spot. As you can see, I have my accessory USB here now plugged in, so I can show you that as well. Two charge ports, I just use one. Charging time, depending on the charger, stock charger around six hours or seven hours and with my fast charger around two to three hours. It also comes with a kickstand, which is a bit worse, I would say, than on the V12. It works, 
However, it's easier to tip it over, but I'm still glad it's here. For those who don't have a display, and I'll also talk about all of these upgrades uh, in a bit, there's also a useful battery indicator and the power button slash light switch is also in a good spot. Another convenience is the suspension. And I'm going to talk about it uh, also in a separate part of the video, but in essence, it makes your ride a bit more carefree. You don't need to look out for all of the potholes so intensely, and especially as said, those bigger holes going off-road is kind of convenient on the V11. Another great aspect of the V11 is the lighting. So here in the front, we have a really powerful motorcycle-like uh, beam, which shines pretty far in front and has also a wide beam. The best part is that it also doesn't blind people too much, as for example, Godways do. In the back, we have also a very solid taillight. Also looks very motorcycle great. And of course, it's more even visible because of the LEDs I have. But in general, the lighting of the V11 is very solid. One thing I have to add is that sadly, this front light is not adjustable. So sadly, if you have a pedal setting that goes down a bit, it won't shine as far as with a upper setting. So I usually have to ride at plus one to get the best beam. I also wish there would be some side lighting stock to make this unicycle more visible in the night. Additionally, of course, you have the app which lets you, lets you configure the wheel in however you want to have it configured. There's two modes, commuting and off-roading. I usually use off-roading and you can also select your pedal sensitivity so the wheel reacts faster onto your leaning or slower. I have it set up at 40% pedal sensitivity. That's my most convenient thing to do. I wouldn't say that it's the most sporty wheel, but it still packs a punch and has quite a bit of torque. Uh, with that said, I know you're eager to find out about the mods, so let's talk about them now. <laughs> Woo! All right, we played with that dog for like 10 minutes and afterwards he didn't want to go back to his owner because he liked just wheeling so much. I think the owner it will be a future electric unicyclist. Cheers if you see that video. <laughs> Let's talk about the mods that we have in this wheel. And the most questions I had about this, and this is a Lempho Tick Wrist display. And essentially what it is, it's like a sort of mini smartphone. So you can equip it also with a SIM card. So it's connected to the internet and EUC World is available on this user interface. It's essentially like a Android uh, experience, but this is quite a small font, so can't really see it that well. This looks like this is the interface, so it's essentially like a mini smartphone. It turned out I didn't use it that much actually, and I would just get this thing out altogether because uh, I just use Darkness Bot and I can't have two apps connected at the same time to the wheel. Uh, but if you are using EOC World or you want to really desperately have a speedo here, you can use that. There's also a special mount from Hulai Market, which you can check out in the link below. So we have a front bumper, we have a rear bumper, just in case something happens to the shell of the V11, which is uh, a bit durable, but it definitely could be better. We have a front mud guard because without that, uh, there's a bit of more water spraying here, which can go onto your feet. So we have that as well. Everything installed by the uh, prior owner. Uh, and the same thing applies to the rear mud guard. Uh, this thing doesn't allow water to spray into the back so much. So it's also a cool mod. There are 3D printed parts here for the LED strips. So the screws which we have here on the wheel are still accessible. Now. All of these things are printed with like uh, 3D printers at home. So I don't really know um, what exactly like the STL files are, but feel free to search around to find it. We have another thing from Hulai Market, which are the Any Pads. So this is like a 3D printed pad 
onto the side of the V11 so you can put any sort of pad onto the wheel because otherwise uh, the V11 doesn't allow to put any pads because this is just like a saddle and there's no friction here that would hold these things in place. I have the side pads here because they have a pretty thick back plate and the pads here I think they're an absolute necessity you shouldn't ride this thing without any pads because uh, the suspension system doesn't have any dampening and you can throw, throw you off very easily if you don't have any pads on so it just like sort of jump off from the wheel. Nilanova for V11 amazing pads not sure about this front part like it's pretty cool for acceleration but I'm not sure if I'm gonna keep it but in general those foot plates are amazing they hold you in place all of the snow like all of the Water, if anything goes here, just goes right through. I love the pins, they're adjustable, full necessity on the V11 and on any wheel, I think. We also have the LED here, LEDs here. Don't know the exact model, but they were configured by the prior owner. White strips in the front and red strips in the back. You can also configure them with the app LED lamp. All of the electronics for that are mounted here on top of the motherboard cover. And they're just, you know, duct tape, so they're sort of water protected and they're di connected directly into the motherboard area to a five volt uh, outlet or to the five volt USB thing. So I don't have to have them co co constantly plugged in to the uh, rear USB charge port. And as you can see, the front display is also charging through the charge port. Now, probably the biggest mod we have here is also the tire. So we have a full CST tire on this wheel uh, which is amazing for off-road use, but it will get you less range. So this is the incline, as you can see, covered in snow. I'm slipping here on my feet. Like, I have trouble just going down here without slipping. And now we're going to test it, oh, especially here. Now we're going to test it out on the V11. We're going to see how tire is slipping constantly and going up but the suspension just helps it to stay planted so let's go <laughs> oh boy that's so impressive Honestly, if you have the option, I would probably get this tire because especially in conditions like these, this is a game changer. I wouldn't say that it fits perfectly onto the wheel and you have to really watch out uh, with the back um, kickstand so it doesn't lock into the tire, but I have special printed um, different kickstand uh, holders so the tire doesn't get stuck that much into kickstand itself. But there's barely enough room to fit this tire, so maybe with the next iteration of a wheel in motion, you will leave more space for off-road tires. It would be really cool if this wheel came stock with the off-road tire. Now, that is not to say that the stock tire is bad, just this is more versatile. And in terms of mods, I also have the stock V11 seat. I don't use it that much because it hinders me from using the trolley handle. Um, that well and it also locks me from leaning in with the knees here uh, to the side. I already don't, don't really like the shape of the seat that much either so I just left it out. Small last feature here is a small 3D printed part so water doesn't come in to this side of the wheel. Um, again everything is kitted out, everything is modded out and with all of these mods I think that uh, this wheel gained a lot of I know, safety when riding, especially the power pads and the foot plates, and also ability when riding with the off-road tire. Naturally, the turning and street performance will be better with the street tire. All right, that's a lot of talking. Now let's move on to the all-in-all -all ride experience and perhaps a bit of a conclusion. <laughs> Here's, <laughs> Here's the best one. Oh, 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 oh,
takie polterze. Więcej chcesz. Chcesz się przejechać. And to tell you more about the user experience sort of uh, and the ride features of the wheel, it's best to tell you when I'm riding sort of. Uh, turn on the light. So in terms of the ride feeling, I gotta say, especially with power pads, since my last review, I feel that it, indeed there's a lot more power uh, now available on the wheel, but it's not as accessible as on, for example, the V12. Uh, not to say that it's not there, but it just takes a bit more force to achieve it. It's definitely more of a cruiser and if you're going on paths that you didn't go on before and if you go even on the street I feel pretty safe on the wheel because I, the foot plates are very tall, very high and if there's any pothole ap approaching I know that this handles it well. The high foot plates do come with a small drawback though that it always needs a step, like a real step up to go on to uh, this wheel which might be tiring in the long run. I think this is the first wheel where I think the foot plates might be just a tad too high. Especially because the suspension is decompressed when you're not using it and then it goes down when you're using it. So in total I think the, when you're riding the height of the foot plates is similar to the V12 but here it just goes down. It goes up higher when it's decompressed and it compresses to a similar level. Although I do love the feeling of being so high off the ground to see anything. It gives me a lot of confidence when riding on bicycle paths and on the road. And speaking about potholes, in terms of suspension, this is worse than the S18 and there is now no question about it after owning the S18 for a while. Uh, it's best for big holes and you know big sort of imperfections on the road, especially ones like, or like here, that would throw you off. But in terms of riding on good quality roads like here i still feel a bit that my tire is missent misaligned and it sort of i know almost feels like it increases the uh, amount of vibrations you have i was riding the commander yesterday and on good quality roads it just felt much smoother than the v11 i was trying different sort of pressures and especially in this weather even if I have my 100 or 110 PSI, it feels very soft and I'm bottoming it, it out. Uh, probably the best uh, PSI to have is around 110 uh, and 70 in the negative chamber. Now let me, let me pass through, woo! But on this, the, these things, this is amazing. So in total, suspension is awesome for like very bad quality roads. But if you mainly ride in the street where there are good quality roads, no, no problems there. 47, 48, boom, tilt back. I love the tilt back here. It's really like, it doesn't throw you off. So the top speed, around 50 kilometers an hour now, 55, uh, depending on the battery state, of course. Totally usable in the street. Nice to have more, but really not that necessary, especially if you ride on uh, bicycle paths. In terms of range, I guess that was my biggest disappointment with this wheel, especially with this tire and this temperature. I could just get it up to 50 kilometers comfortably and then, uh, or 55, and then the go home mode would turn on. Yeah, I guess for me, just a matter of more range puts the V12 on a higher spot than the V11. And I'll talk about the comparison of those two wheels also in a second. I like that there is almost no pedal dipping in turns. The minimal pedal dipping might be due to the different tire here. Um, and. In general, I think that this wheel is just really big for what it gets you. And if I would be going on a train, if I would take it somewhere, um, I'm just not really sure if the bigger form factor is worth it, especially for the, for the distances you're making with this wheel. If this would be like 3000 watt hours, I would like totally get it, but it's not. And for the distances you're making with the wheel, not really sure if you uh, need that dis suspension desperately. In terms of maintenance, there's also not that much maintenance with the wheel uh, and all of the parts are available because Inmotion doesn't shoot out like five models every year like Bigot does and every batch of the wheel keeps getting better so that's pretty cool. I wouldn't use it for like you know crazy jumps or stuff like that but in general use cases even some stairs uh, in, in everyday riding it performs pretty well. So I often get a question from you guys, which wheel should I get, the V11 or the V12? And to answer this question, I think that the V11 is better for 
riders that want the ultimate comfort, that have worse quality roads. Um, I think it's for people that want to you know, have everything in a package, uh, the good lighting, the features, good trolley handle, etc., etc. I don't know, they want also the off-road tire since it's not available on the um, V12. If you're more of a street riding and most of the streets are pretty good quality in your city and you want a wheel a bit more f playful and a bit more responsive, uh, with also better speakers, but a bit of a worse, you know, trolley handle and less comfort. Like especially here, this works so well. Yeah, these holes are just not really that nice when riding different wheels. Then you should go with the V12, especially also if range plays a huge part for you. So with that said, I hope that you liked my revisit of the Emotion V11. You liked the uh, video and if you're still here do like it subscribe to see more content like this i'll see you in the next video see you soon maybe some postscriptum ps i know that my recent um, video about the you know tear down and quality and stuff um, i did uh, use maybe not the best tools for the job and everything was fixed by the uh, owner of the wheel after i exchanged it with the msx um, it's not to say that, you know, the, the quality then was perfect, actually, with the newest batches, they improved plastics and screws, etc, etc. Cetera, et cetera. But I do admit that I wasn't using the best tools for the job and the wheel was fixable. And I also have special custom covers for the nuts here on the bottom. made by the previous owner of the wheel so check out the description to to get those is it a wheel i will keep for a long time well at least for for a bit the range is definitely not enough for me but at this time i only have the sherman and the v11 Woo! at the time so for now i will keep it but let's see Woo! what will happen in the future and then we can decide oh that works so well which wheel to keep. See ya!